Hello and welcome to the Tiny Human Knits podcast, my podcast all about knitting, cro crochet, sewing, what's this? And knitting, sewing, crochet, cross stitch, and all manner of crafty goodness. My name is Laura and I'm coming to you from high level Alberta, Canada, where I live with my boyfriend, our dog, our cat, and our rabbit. You can find me as Tiny Human Knits online everywhere as I did this the same last time. Ugh. You can find me online as Tiny Human Knits on Instagram, Etsy, YouTube, and Ravelry. There we go. Let's get it out. It is February the 19th. It is Friday. Oh, golly gumdrops. Apparently I'm not used to it being nice weather and sunny because I'm looking out at my window behind you and it's just... <sighs> it's been a little over two weeks since my last episode. Um, which is amazing because I didn't uh, podcast at all for 2020. Sent out two episodes in a year. It's a record. Um, <laughs> you'll have to excuse my slightly red face. Um, it is, as I said, sunny outside, and I do have a pretty significant light sensitivity, so my face gets nice and red. But I can't help it because it hasn't been sunny and warm-ish like this for a very long time. Anyway. <laughs> As I said, it's been a little over two weeks since my last episode. Um, I'm going to try to be a little bit more consistent. I'm not going to set a schedule for myself. I'll probably just do episodes as I have things to actually talk about. So, um, yeah. I already filmed this episode, but I felt really weird. And I felt like I had to force the words out for some reason. Um, I was wearing a different sweater. So, <laughs> I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but I changed my sweater and I'm starting over because the light is still good because it's not the dead of winter anymore so it's not you know dark at three so anyway as I said <sighs> how are you guys doing good good excellent glad to hear it <sighs> anyway I'm gonna start off with what I'm wearing and I am wearing my weekender sweater by Andrea Mowry I knit this a little over two years ago out of some Patton's Classic Wool that I bought at a yarn shop in Fredericton, New Brunswick when we were there for Christmas a little over two years ago. Uh, I knit it to pattern except for I didn't do the high-low hem in the bottom, which doesn't really make a difference to me. Um, I would have done it. I think I had to start the hem like a couple times over so I think I was just over it so I just got rid of that. Anyway, there's nothing really else to say. I made it to pattern. I really like it. It's comfortable. I always forget that I have it. I would wear it more often, but I forget. But yeah, I'm trying to showcase the ones that I have ready made. I don't know why I'm going to the Oh, I haven't talked to anyone for months. It's really starting to show. Anyway, I have a few finished objects that I want to talk to you guys about. Um, they're all different crafts, which is kind of fun. So I'm going to start off with the first one on the pile here. <clears throat> so if you watched my last episode, you would see that I was working on the lighthouse cross stitch and it is now complete. Um, I've already framed it. I always use a acid free um, mounting board. It's got like a sticky back. You peel it off and you can just stick it to. I find it really easy. A lot of my cross stitches are mounted that way and it makes them look really nice and then I always put them in a Ikea ribba, I don't know, it's not a cross stitch frame, it's just a frame. It's a frame! Anyway, here is the finished cross stitch. I'm really happy with it. It had a lot of line work that needed to be done. The only thing I would say about this pattern is that there's there's line work in different colors and different strand quantities and the one thing I would say to if you're designing cross stitches with line work don't draw the lines in the pattern where line work is supposed to be in black when your grid is in black because you can't see where the lines are supposed to go so for me I actually had to look at the pattern photo on the like the Etsy listing to see where I was supposed to do a lot of my my um, line work, which was a pain, but I'm finished now and I really like it. I think it turned out really well. Um, I've got I ordered some more 
um, Ada cloth to do some other ones in the same style. My preferred Ada cloth like count is either 16 or 18 count. Um, I find 14 to be a little bit wide, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's been sitting on my desk in the back here, just hanging out because I haven't decided where in the house it's going to be hung up, but probably just in here somewhere. I don't know. It'll just, it'll live on the desk for now. Okay. My next item is a quilt. I got this back from my mother-in-law, who is a long arm quilter lady. She quilts all of my quilts for me, unless I have to do it myself, which I'm not fond of. My sewing machine, I have a Janome, a really basic Janome, so the, um, the space on the right hand side is so small that trying to quilt anything by yourself is just a pain in the butt. So I try not to, I send them all to her. <laughs> And she's very accommodating, um, but occasionally I do have to quilt them myself. Anyway, that was unnecessary. So, this quilt has got cat hair on it already, but the recipient also has three cats and two ferrets, so it doesn't matter. This is for a baby that is due to be born in March, pretty much any day now. Pardon my hideous chair where I keep unfinished knits and such. So this is lovely for one. Oh. It is called the Lloyd and Lola quilt. It is by Elizabeth Hartman, who is one of my favorite quilt designers. She has all of her quilt designs pretty much are very like picture oriented so it's like dinosaurs or you know zoo animals or fish you know something it actually looks like so it's a lot of little pieces a lot of um you know fiddly bits and this is for <laughs> my friend Brittany um and I chose it because for years now she has been sending me like llama themed things. I don't know how it started. I think I might actually have something that she sent me a while ago. Yep, here we go. So in this, this actually might be an alpaca, but you get the same idea. She sent me this like quite a while ago and she sent me like llama stickers and just She'll send me like llama or alpaca memes on Instagram. So when I saw this pattern, I don't know if I'd seen it before, but I saw it last, like late last year, and I thought, perfect. Now I know what blanket that I'm going to make. Um, so yeah, I got it back, I think, last week. And I just put some binding on it. And then I hand sewed the binding down. It is one of my favorite things to do is just sit on the couch, generally watching either 1995 Pride and Prejudice or Lord of the Rings and just spend hours and hours sewing down the binding. It's, I find it very soothing. Um, so yeah, that's what I did with this. I don't know what else to say about it, but I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I hope she likes it. I'm going to send it out to her probably early next week. I want to make her another one of these. This is Theodore Bear. I made this last year. It was supposed to be for my new nephew that was born last year, but as you can see, it's mine. Um, but one of the last times that I saw Brittany, she uh, just sort of held on to him and stroked him gently and told me that she liked the color of purple. So I'll be making another one for her. So that she can have one for her baby. Or her. It doesn't have to be for her baby. I find generally um, when I make things like that, it's it's for the person, not the baby. <laughs> you have more enjoyment out of it. Anyway, so that'll be her, the package I send to her. Just this up. So yeah, I've really been enjoying quilting a lot. So, one more. The last finished thing I have got is also for a baby. As I said, 
in my last episode. I'm doing only things for myself unless it's a baby. That's the caveat. Um, and this one was a lot of fun. It is for a different baby. It's for my sister-in-law Dana who is due in May and I love her to pieces. So I'm really excited. I was... <laughs> If you watched my Vlogmas videos, you'll know that I was so sure that it was gonna be a girl. <laughs> it's not. It's a boy. Because everyone has boys. My whole family. Anyway. So, I, I'm actually surprised at the turnover I had of this. I usually hoard patterns and then knit them like two years later, but I actually bought this pattern and almost immediately cast it on, which I'm pretty excited about. But, I saw this pattern and knew that she had to have it because she is a very knitworthy person and her baby is gonna be the same. So this is the, I think it's called the Bear Me Suit. It is a pattern by Hip Knit Shop. And it's got little hood and little ears. So I saw this and yeah, I had to make it and it's pretty awesome because it managed to get three crazy old stash um, skeins from my stash out because I had bought them on a trip to Hinton years and years ago with my husband um, who was her brother my sister-in-law obviously who, um, so yeah not only did I buy these you know when I was with her brother who is now deceased um, but I also just got it out of my stash and it's really nice. So uh, the yarn that I used was, oh come on, got a label here somewhere. Nope, that's not a label. Goodness, you think I'd be better at this. <laughs> um, it's Galway Worsted, so it is a diamond yarn. So I bought this from the yarn store in Hinton and they had only had three skeins of the gray left, so I do actually have a skein of a sort of a greenish tealy color that I'm going to probably make some accessories for the baby with. But, um, so yeah, they only had three skeins, so I bought those, and I never, <coughs> pardon me, <clears throat> I never knew what I was going to do with them. So, this is a great way to tease them. But, I did actually run out of yarn, so the top part of the hood, so about here to the top, the ears and then the uh, button bands are actually knit in a Durham Natura Gilead in a gray color because I thought it matched really well. They're both 100% wool and this would be great. So I made it in the 9 to 12 month size. I'm pretty sure I used the needle required, the needle size, and then just added some buttons from a button stash. I'm so excited for the baby to be wearing this. I I can't wait. I, I'm gonna have to wait like over a year still, but I'm I'm pretty excited. Or I guess not over a year. It's only February. Yeah, like babies can wear things that are too big. It's fine. It's fine. I'm really happy with it though. It turned out super cute. I love it a lot. <coughs> Pardon me. So that's gonna go in her care package. Um, there's a few other things that I want to make for her. A hat, baby mitts, um, probably some socks or some slippers, and then a sweater and then some like soakers, so some baby shorties that I want to make <coughs> for her as well because I love her and she deserves it. So, but with that, I have also made a quilt for that baby and I have the quilt top that I finished a few days ago. And that is another pattern by Elizabeth Hartman because I find with baby, like, I don't want to make just a plain baby quilt. I want to make it like fancy. Um, it's the same as uh, my new nephew who was born last year got a second big bear quilt. This uh, I showed it in my last podcast, um, but I made another version for him. So that's what he got. But the quilt top that I made for this baby it's a lot bigger, it would be harder to show, but I'm gonna do my best. So this is the beehive quilt. Get to roll it up here. 
hope you can see that. If not, I might put in a little bit of footage separate. Oh, I am a creature of extraordinary grace. So yes, this is the Beehive Quilt. It is a lot of pieces. Um, it's <laughs> very fiddly. It's, it was interesting though. I got it done quite quickly because for me, the reason I can get so many things done is that I don't know how to like compartmentalize crafts and life. So I just craft all the time. To the point, you know, where uh, eating and I'm very good at telling myself to do something and then actually doing it. So it's just, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But I'm very happy with how this one turned out. I've got uh, the backing made up. I've got ordered some really, really cute like beehive fabric so it matches perfectly. Um, so I've got that ready to go. I'm going to be sending it to my mother-in-law in secret because, you know, that's the recipient's mother. <laughs> so she's gonna have to be very careful so my sister-in-law doesn't see it. That's going to be sent off soon. Uh, I also am finishing... <clears throat> my throat is so dry. <coughs> I'm also going to be finishing another quilt top that I want to send off with uh, to get quilted. Um, but I also got another one back yesterday. I'm probably going to save that one to show you when I'm finished it. I only need to sew on the binding. I've already trimmed off all of the edges. So I need to sew on the binding and then I get another day or two of sitting on the couch watching Lord of the Rings and sewing down the binding. So I will show that when it's finished. Um, it's a really pretty, pretty quilt. It was supposed to be a Christmas present last year, but with everything taking as long as it was, I wasn't in a hurry. So it might be a Christmas present this year. So it doesn't count because I made it last year. I've got quite a few quilt tops that I need to um, either get quilted or quilt myself. Anyway, that one was that. I'm really happy with how this turned out, which is funny because when I was making the B squares, I thought I was screwing it up so badly. My, I'm not very good at quilting, but I am determined. <laughs> so I feel like that makes up for it. Um, so I managed to sort of move things around so they are actually square even though when you look at them in individual like pieces it's not very it's fine it's fine it doesn't really matter so i have two works in progress that i'm going to show you um the first one is a cross stitch i started this one in december of last year i did show it on my uh vlogmas videos i think um and this is for this room this is an office suite office so it's gonna have um, a wreath of flowers around it but I only got this far because I was missing so many colors from the design that I needed so I put in an order with lovecrafts.com and so I ordered on December 7th all of the embroidery floss that I was missing but I also ordered some yarn for baby knits so I've got it like over there which I'm gonna try to knit right away but I was also missing a bunch of embroidery floss, so I got those. Um, I ordered them on the 7th of December, and I got this parcel on Tuesday this week. So, it was in a weird, like, shipping limbo for so long. Um, like, I wasn't in a hurry for it, though, but it is kind of funny. So, if you're waiting for parcels, like, it could take a long time. They could be stuck somewhere because this was stuck in Ontario for about a month because I think the distribution center that it got stuck at was one of the places that had a really big COVID outbreak so they had to like shut the whole place down so that was completely understandable but I just started other cross stitches in the meantime like that lighthouse one was done entirely between the time I started this and the time I'll be able to finish it. But that is my first project. I have cat hair under my glasses. 
The second project is the Cordia tank that I started um, right after my last episode. I drew it from my jar of projects. I could have gotten it done very, very easily, but I did get distracted by the bear suit and the quilts that I'm making. So I only have a little bit done, although it is just smooth sailing knitting right now. Um, this is as far as I am. It is a bottom up top. Um, it's supposed to be a shape, like a fitted waist shaping long tank top. I have a very short torso. Um, actually, a little side note here. This was really funny to me. So there's this weird trend going on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok, but I see it on Instagram. I'm too old for TikTok, but whatever. Um, where people are discovering that your wingspan is the same as your height, which is, you know, the basic rule of thumb when it comes to proportions. Um, I've always known, um, I was pretty sure I was supposed to be taller, but I've never actually measured it before. So I got my, I got my boyfriend to measure my height and then my wingspan. Um, I am five foot two and a half tall, but I'm five foot five and a half wingspan. So I've got three inches longer in my arms than I do in my actual height which seems accurate because as I've said before on this podcast, um, my torso is so short that my, my ribs and my hips actually overlap each other. So I'm pretty sure, you know, I had my growth stunted and I was supposed to be taller, but I just got squashed. So long fitted things don't suit me at all, not a bit. So what I'm doing instead is I cast on the number of stitches for this top for the full bust measurement. So it's supposed to be, you know, hip in for the waist and then up to the bust, but I just cast on the number for the bust and I'm just knitting it straight up for 11 inches until I get to the design at the top for the tank top. And because of the design, it doesn't have any ribbing or anything at the bottom. It is a rolled hem with a little bit of ribbing, I think, to keep it from rolling anymore. I don't like that as an idea when it's higher. When it was lower, it was fine because I've made this before. Um, but higher up, I didn't really want that. So what I did instead is I'm doing a folded over, or I did already a folded over hem. So I cast on for the number of like full bust stitches, and then I knit on a smaller needle for about an, an inch and a quarter. And then I did one row of um, purl stitches, and then changed to a larger needle, and then did the same amount. And then I just I just kept knitting, and then I just sewed down the. Um, the cast on edge on the inside. So it's just a flat, you can see that it's a hem, but it's not um, ribbing or anything. Cause I thought ribbing would look weird. So yeah, I just did a flat hem. So I'm just knitting straight stockinette at the moment. Again, for about 11 inches until I get to the point where I can do the detailing at the top. And that should be done. And I should be done this soon because I can now like dedicate my knitting time to this. I just probably need to find an interesting anime to watch while I'm knitting on that because I knit a lot faster when I'm watching something with subtitles. But I have already drawn my next project from my jar, as shown for my jar of projects. Um, also, if anyone's wondering, this jar, it was a candle. Um, I got this candle from Canadian Tire. Um, they have amazing candles. Yummy. And then I just clean the wax out of them. I've got probably about eight of these in my house because I love the shape of them. That doesn't matter. Anyway, I drew my next project. I had my boyfriend draw the next one. Um, and it is the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs. And for that, we have Stroll Tweed Fingering Weight in the Sequoia Heather. And then I'm going to be holding it together with a Loft Labyrinth. And I think that it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. It's also just a really nice design. I'm really excited to knit it. But yeah, that's going to be my next project. So I need to finish this tank top so I can cast this on because I love projects with, with mohair in them. Love them. They're one of my favorites. But that is my next project. So hopefully I can get the other one done in like the next week or so and then cast that on. But I am, I have ordered more bear yarn for an update that is going to be coming on the 6th of March. It is going to be a pre-order update for the Very Vintage Christmas colorway. 
Um, so I'm going to be getting the yarn in beginning of March and doing some prep before I do the pre-order because very vintage Christmas is very time consuming. I can't dye that much at one time because of the, the way the colorway is dyed. But so I'm going to be doing a pre-order. So if you've been wanting a skein of very vintage Christmas, then that is your opportunity. There is going to be not much of a limit of uh, the amount. Oh, that was eloquent. Anyway, it'll still be in 50 gram put ups. That is how I order the berry yarn. It's just easier for me, but you can just order two 50 grams if you need 100 grams. And I will most likely be doing it so that the one skein, because I dye it in 100 grams at a time, and then I'll just keep the two skeins from the same skein together. Or, you know, two 50 grams from the same you, you get it, you get it. So yeah, that'll be going up on the 6th of March. In between that, I might be doing an update for some factory seconds that I've had uh, put aside from the last two updates. Um, it's a way for you to get slightly colors that have gone slightly awry at like half the price of the usual skein. So I might be doing an update for that. But yeah, if you have shopped the updates, thank you very much. I always love seeing yarn go out into the wild and I do enjoy dyeing them. It's been a bit well, let's just say I've never been consistent. I am not a consistent update person. It's not how I roll. I have a tendency to overwork myself when I do try to do consistency. So I'm just trying to, you know, be kind to myself. But anyway, I'm going to lose the light here in a bit, but I hope you are all well and I will catch up with you next time. Goodbye.